You roll up to your weekly D&D game. Bev is in one hand, character sheet in the other, ready to slay some kobolds. But wait, what's this? Oh no, you've forgotten your dice. You're gonna look like a right idiot when everyone finds out. It doesn't have to be this way though. What if I told you that by simply wearing a bright orange watch, you never have to look like an idiot ever again? Today, we're going to make a wearable digital dice roller. Using the buttons, you can scroll through all the usual polyhedral dice. This one scrolls forward and this one goes back. And with a little flick of your wrist, you can roll the selected dice. A little red LED illuminates to let you know the dice has been rolled, just in case you roll the same number twice. Pretty nifty. What's more, it costs less than 15 quid and it's pretty easy to set up. The basis for this project is the M5 Stick C from M5 Stack. I've fallen in love with this little thing. It's incredible value for money, and the projects you can make of it are almost endless. The M5 Stick C is a programmable ESP32 development board in a wearable form factor. In plain English, it's basically like an Arduino. You upload code to it, and you can make it do things. For about 10 to 15 quid, this little orange thing packs an insane amount of features. It's got a built-in battery, a tiny full-color OLED display, Wi-Fi connectivity, an infrared transmitter, a microphone, a six-axis gyro, an Arduino-style pinout, a Grove port, USB-C charging, and last but not least, some programmable buttons and an LED. To be honest, I bought this thing about a year ago, and it's just been sitting in my drawer ever since. It has so many features packed in that it just makes it a bit intimidating. Combined with a pretty sparse documentation and a lack of tutorials, it's really hard to know where to start. Once you get into it though, M5 Stack actually has a great and very intuitive system for programming. One of the M5 Stick's key features is that it can be programmed in a variety of ways, including via the Arduino IDE, if that's up your street. For myself, while I do have some knowledge of Arduino, I consider myself quite the noob. I've always found coding somewhat intimidating, and so M5 Stack's UI flow system really appeals to me. For the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go through this whole project step by step, but I'll link my project files down in the description and show you how to upload that to your M5 Stick, as well as showing you some of the basic functions. To use UI flow, you first need to download M5 Burner. This is a tool to flash your M5 Stick with firmware that can understand UI flow's MicroPython programming language. Once you've got that installed, open it up and select Stick C on the left. Then download the latest version of UI Flow in the main window. Plug in your M5 Stick and select the correct COM port at the top. A pretty familiar process if you ever tried any Arduino stuff. Be sure to select 115200 as the board rate, then hit Burn, as well as entering your Wi-Fi name and password. Once that's done, you need to open up your web browser and go to flow.m5stack.com. There is a desktop version of this, but it gave me nothing but hassle, so I'd recommend sticking with the web version for now. You'll be prompted to choose a version. I've been using the beta and I haven't had any issues with it. Then go to the menu at the top right and click settings. Change the device to stick C. For the API key, this should already be visible on your M5 stick screen if it's turned on. If it's not turned on, Use the button on the left hand side to get it started up and enter the API key. Click on the little refresh icon at the bottom and all being well, it'll say connected. To get up and running with the D&D dice, first we'll need to add the required background image to the M5 Sticks flash memory. Click the manager button to the left of the play symbol at the top and then click on add image. Find D&D LND2.jpg that was included with my project files and hit open. Give it a minute to upload and it should appear under the add image button. Hit cancel to close the window and go to the menu at the top right again. Click open and find dnd dice final.m5f and open that up and once it's loaded press the play button. Over on your M5 stick C the app should be loaded and ready to roll. You can get it. If you turn it off and back on again the M5 stick will go back into the internet pairing mode but you can also make it boot straight into the DICE app. To do this, turn the device off by long pressing the button on the left, then press both the front and left side buttons at the same time while it turns on. This brings you into a settings menu. You can use the button on the right hand side to navigate to the app list. Press the front button to select and choose the topmost one. It's usually called temp.py. Then you're back in the DICE app. 
and it will boot straight into this every time you turn it on. Jobs are good at. If you just wanted yourself a cheap little digital dice roller, then we're all done. But I imagine most of you will be interested in how you can use UiFlay for other projects. So I'm going to start a new project here and show you the basics of how the dice roller works. At the top left, we've got our UI builder. This allows you to drag placeholders in and uh, then we can use our code to change what they do. So the main ones I use are label and uh, image. You can actually use the shapes to make your own images if that's your kind of thing. But I can't be asked with that. I normally use Photoshop. So for our purposes, we're just going to drag in two uh, labels. They'll say text when you put them in and they'll automatically call themselves label one and label zero. We'll take label one. We'll change the text to say zero zero and we'll change the font to this one just to make it big and then this one we'll call that d20 and we'll, we'll do a d20 for an example then over on this part of the screen this is where you build your code um, you can actually just switch over and just type it in python if you know python but as i'm a code noob i don't do that <laughs> i use these blocks and i really like them so first we're going to grab a loop a loop uh, just means it's going to do this thing over and over again, which is what we want because we want to constantly check whether we're rolling the dice or not. Down here, we've got a section called hardwares. This corresponds to different functions that the M5 stick has built in. The uh, LED one's nice and simple, on and off, and we'll be using that as well. But the one we're going to look at is IMU. So IMU basically means the, the six axis gyroscope that's built in. And we're going to take get x ack, which is uh, x axis acceleration, and we're going to use that to trigger things. So we need to take a logic bit. We'll take an if do, put that in our loop. And we'll take another logic piece, this one here, and link that on. And we're going to use greater than. So if get x ack is greater than. And we'll take a number block and we'll do 1.5. 1.5 what? I don't know, but it works for me. A UI block. So the UI block's really useful. These things can set the, uh, the placeholders you dragged into the UI to do different things. So this one here is the basic change the text of the label. And we want label one, which is this one. Just double check, yeah, label one. So we want random integer, oh, let's get a number, put it here, duplicate that, put it here. Obviously this is a d20, so 1 and 20. If the x axis is accelerating beyond a certain thing, it's going to roll uh, a number between 1 and 20. Then because this is a loop and we don't want it to keep trying to do it on top of itself. We have to put a timer at the end. And if you hit play up here, then you should be able to see that it's basically working. But we can make it a little bit better than that quite easily. So we'll also make the LED come on while we're rolling. We'll add another little weight. Then up here on this little second little cog thing, we can add an else if. And we'll duplicate this one. Put that here. Now we want to do the opposite. So if it's less than 1.5, which means we're not shaking it, then we want the LED to turn off. And if you hit play, uh, that should be pretty good. Now, to do it the way I did it and being able to scroll through all the different dice, it does get a little bit complicated, but there's a flashcard tutorial that I found on the M5 Stack YouTube channel, and I'll link that in the description below. Um, basically, if you follow that tutorial, you can adapt it fairly easily to the D&D &D dice app. 
or you can just look at my code and like reverse engineer it if you're really that bothered. But I just wanted to give you a quick run through of the basics of UI flow and uh, hopefully get some cogs turning and get you thinking about the different things you could do with this software. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm really enjoying using the M5 stick and I've got a few more projects lined up that I think would be really cool to do with this thing. So I might turn this into a bit of a mini series on the M5 stick. And I also want to check out the other M5 stack products because they've got a lot of weird and wonderful stuff. Stay tuned for that. And until next time, toodles. Toodles.